Happy Monday to everybody. This is Cooking with Sven. I am your host, Sven. We have a very special episode. This is near and dear to my heart. Um, not because I'm, I mean, I am Italian, so, but we're going to make some homemade pasta, right? So let's, let's roll up our sleeves and, and get to it. I love I love the intro too and how it was it, it is making pasta right but those are not my hands um, maybe after this episode we'll uh, we'll have more to uh, to use for the intro um, but yeah like I said homemade pasta it is it's uncanny it's absolutely it's very different than box pasta right um, once you've had homemade pasta you never want to go back to box pasta uh, that's I mean, that's a fact, right? It's, I don't think there's any lying. And if, if, if anybody tells you otherwise, then you know what, then we need to, we need to question that person. But thank you again for joining me tonight. Um, my buddy, Nate, uh, pole vault, we'll, we'll call him pole vault. Uh, but, uh, you can find him at Nate, you can uh, find him at Nate pole vault uh, on Twitter. Um, he's also a member of IBT. Be sure to hit the subscribe button um, and like also. Um, be sure to subscribe to IBT, In Between Media. Tons of shows, tons of content. Go check out the website, uh, inbetweenmedia.com, I believe is the website. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Nate also has tons of shows. Um, and then I got to give a shout out to uh, my buddy Dave Fantasy, who is going to be our behind the scenes guy tonight. Because uh, Short is uh, unfortunately, um, you know, taking a, he's on a hiatus as of now. So Dave's stepping in to help out. Um, but tonight we are cooking. We're going to make some homemade pasta. Now, Nate, have you used, uh, you're, you are a chef. You've been a chef. Have you ever made homemade pasta? I have never made pasta from scratch in 10 plus years in the restaurant industry. It was just never something I was asked to do. So it's, it, it, uh, trust me, honestly. And, and I, and I, I worked there, I worked in the restaurants for years. Right. And I mean, it's just, unless you're at that place where you're going to do it because even if you do it once let's say right you make it like for one one dinner or something like that you're setting that expectation yes you know you're setting the expectation that, hey why, why why did you get homemade pasta like this day instead of this is different you know so it's kind of exactly so i could definitely relate um to not not being fortunate enough to you know have the ability just throwing some broccoli robin. I'm doing this on the side. This is not part of the show, but my wife also wanted this. Um, <laughs> you got to keep the wife happy. Just wanted to throw that. Right? Exactly. And broccoli rob. I mean, it's a very it's a very popular Italian dish. Some broccoli rob, a fresh garlic, salt, pepper, crushed red pepper, um, and then with the pasta as well too. So I mean, it's, yeah. can't go wrong with that, right? Um, we're gonna we're gonna turn these noodles into some chicken alfredo. Later, Ooh, chicken I like that. Okay, nice. I was never, I've never really a big, been a big fan of the Alfredo sauces. I don't know, maybe it's just a Northeast thing, us Italians in, in New York. I mean, it is, it is very popular. But give me a nice red sauce, gravy, I guess as we call it. You know, um, homemade, homemade from scratch. Uh, Sorry about that. I've got a kid walking around. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good, Jackson. He's part of it. He's excited about the pasta. <laughs> no, he is. Yes, I mean, yes we got to get we got to get Nate a chef's hat. That is that is true. Right? I do. I used to have one. I used to have the full getup. I even had an embroidered chef's jacket. But I haven't worked in restaurants in sixteen years almost, so I kind of lost most of that stuff. Ooh, I hear you, man. Sorry, just getting the broccoli rob going a little bit here. I could also show this on, on the live stream as well um, for anybody. Broccoli rob is not not easy to make. I don't know if you've ever made it before, Nate. I have yeah. any form of greens like that, like collard greens, broccoli rob, anything like that. It's always kind of difficult to make. You run the risk right? of melting it, you overcook it, but then it has some of that, so like retains some of that bitterness if you undercook it. Very bitter. Very, Very bitter. bitter. That's a, one of the things I love about a good barbecue restaurant is they, if they have good collard greens, it means they know what they're doing. Right. Exactly. Yes. And I have definitely had some pretty good collard greens down here in Texas um, at some spots, but yes, it's a, basically the same family, right? Well, same you know, what, species, right? Exactly. I mean, it's the South. 
So it makes sense. Comfort food, Southern cooking, fried. There's a little bit of Cajun in Texas, not a ton when you get more to central Texas, but um, yeah, I mean, the best barbecue I've ever had was in Orange County, California for our rehearsal dinner for our wedding. Who would think that's the okay. best barbecue you'd ever had? It's honestly, it's the little places. It's the, it's the random little spots, right, that you go to. And like, who would have thought, you know, I come, I come to Texas and I find a place, Hungarian, Austrian food, which that will be a, a future episode as well. I am Hungarian and Austrian. My father was born in Austria, but there's a restaurant up in Plano, not too far away from here called George's. This guy sounds like Arnold and Wolfgang Puck. Like his accent is that hard still. To this day, I still tell people it's the best food I've had in Texas better than the barbecue and all like the food is absolutely unbelievable but why would i go to texas for hungarian food? you know what i mean so right it's just, right yeah. that's interesting <laughs> you really never know exactly um so let's say pasta homemade pasta can't believe, homemade how, pasta. Simple it is. Can't believe how simple it is to make right you can obviously you can you can alter it you can change whatever you want but basically the simple simple ingredients right hey jen uh I know she can't hear me, <laughs> but all right, let me uh, position over here. So Dave, if you want to, if you want to show the food cam, boom, 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 all right, there we go. Awesome. So I'm using all purpose flour. We got three cups of all purpose flour, right? Beautiful. It's in a bowl. I have it in a bowl right now um, for the time being. But what we're going to do is we are going to put it on the counter. So you probably have seen this before. All right. So you put your flour. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice little canyon. So now, obviously, if you have a if you have a mixer or anything like an actual pasta maker itself, where you literally just throw the ingredients in, then yeah, go with that. <laughs> but we figured we want to take it as raw as possible, and this is, I mean, this is the olden time, right? This is exactly how they used to make it back in the day. I mean, for for years, homemade pasta. Um, so I notice yeah. you're not. So you're making the you're making the divot, but you're not going all the way to the table, correct? You could. I mean, you definitely could, right? Uh, so it, it, it all depends. I mean, you got that nice metal table, too, that'll definitely, like, that's like a kitchen. You know what I mean? That's something you'd find in, like, a restaurant. Like, that's great. It is, like, this is straight out of a restaurant, I'm pretty sure. I absolutely love that. That's fantastic. So what I'm going to do, what we're going to do, though, is put the eggs right, right in the center. Um, so there we go. Got the eggs, right? We're almost kind of like scrambled eggs, but pasta, you know what I mean? Yep. So something I was short an egg coming into making this recipe. So something that I did, you can use a teaspoon of olive oil to substitute for the fat and the yolk that they're looking for. In addition to the olive oil, you're if if you don't have an egg. Yes. Just a little yes, protein. yes, yes. Peter, what's up, man? Yes, we need to go. We need to go back to George's. Well, actually, I don't know if if, if we ever went to George's together. Um, but uh, what do you call it? Um, I think my wife wants to get a first hand of the uh, of the show now, so she's VIP seat uh, right in front of the the uh, the chef. Um, she's excited. Oh, he did. Well, the, everybody can hear you too, by the way. So just let you know. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Thomas did a countdown. Thank you, Thomas. Thanks, T Rex. Thanks, Thomas Rex. So we have our flour. We have our eggs right here. Right. I'm gonna put a little bit more oil. I'm going to put a little bit of oil, right? Extra virgin. Let's see if you can see it. It's an extra virgin. It is Italian extra virgin too. So we'll put just a little bit of oil right in the center. Now we're not adding water just yet, right? So what we're going to do, we're basically going to mix this up. Get a fork. You could use your fingers too, right? So essentially we're just mixing it. Let me shift that over so you guys can see. So essentially we're mixing it right with the egg kind of like i said the scrambled eggs a little bit now there's no there's nothing else in here so it's not going to get all clumped you know what i mean like nate like i don't know if you added the water yet but 
You notice how it's kind of just like all whatever? Yep. Which is okay. I mean, that's fine because essentially we just really need to just mix it, right? It's basically like the episode with mac and cheese. Even if you didn't mix it that well, like your bechamel, still, mm -hmm. it's still like it's still going to get, you know what I mean? So. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to position this. Apologies, everybody. It's like things, okay, so I've got it all. Things I've got like it all this. Way. Yep, there you go. So now, Another, okay, as as you were, as you were, Nate. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So now, once we once we did all of that, right? Um, let me check on this broccoli rob actually really quick. Hey, nice feet, man. All right, I'm going to take that off the heat for a second. I also started the water too, Nate. I don't know if you started your water um, for us to. Uh... So if you Got want it. to turn your water on, now Got what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add a little bit of water into this. How much are you adding? How much are you adding? So right now I'm adding. I have about a half a cup of water set aside, but right. as as I work the dough, like you're going to need obviously a little bit more, right? But yes, at altitude. Okay, so I hear what you're saying. So just you're kind of like, as you're going, you're adding the water, mixing it up, checking consistency. It's it's definitely a messy job. That's for it sure. It is. Right? You could create like it, another, you can create another little crater. Now it doesn't look, doesn't look that great right now. Like obviously on, on air, right? Like you're looking at it, everybody's probably like, what is that? That looks disgusting, right? Well, I, I just made Mine's, a huge mess. I'll be cleaning up. So yeah, yeah, it's all good. I mean, nothing short of this when it comes to flour, right? So see that it's jumping up, right? In a bowl, it's a lot easier. Are you cleaning it? So we'll add some more water. Is that seriously you? Is that yeah. you? The mess, the mess that it, that it's making is amazing, right? Oh, dude. I have just made the biggest mess. Yep. I keep losing water off the table. It's all good. Is that you right there? Buddy. But the great thing about it, though, is that the more you work it, the more it's going to come together, right? So, like, it, it looks like it's a little crazy right now. Yep. No, oh, it gets very flaky. Um, it's kind of like if you've ever made this. Exactly, from exactly. Dave, you can take off of that right now if you want. So the folks aren't just staring at a glob of, you know. Hey, it's okay. Some right, exactly. Like hey, hey, but I guess that that is the rawness of the show, right? I mean, that is exactly. Kind of the intent, the intent of the show, guys. But like I said, I'm not, I'm not a licensed chef. I absolutely love cooking. I have been a Do chef they, before. <laughs> dude, there's some places I've been that it's like, well, they really should maybe start licensing these people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing. Here's the great. Th here's the thing. Like I was saying too, right? It's of course it's it's messy. This is not. This is by no means a clean. No. Process unless unless you are using an actual, like, uh, what's pasta that, mixer. Exactly. Unless you're using Craig, an actual. What's up, buddy? Like mixer. Yeah. Well, this is old right? school, and like, I don't know, man. Making stuff like this, there's more of a sense of pride. Um, you put a lot recently, more TLC into it, right? A lot, a little bit more love, you know, a little oh, bit more. Exactly. Something um, we love, we're big fans of, are euros. Ooh, okay. But, but that's not. I mean, that's generally not something you just like make at home. So you go buy the euro meat, whatever. Um, except unless you're me, <laughs> we, I do euro from scratch. Um, right. That's exactly what I would do. It, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it was it better than the stuff that we get from somewhere else? No, but was it close enough in flavor that it was absolutely worth it for me to have made it on my own? One hundred percent. Right. Exactly. But you feel like you said you feel that sense of pride, right? Like it's it's definitely yep. it's the same thing with pasta, right? Like people see it and they're just like, oh well, you know, like I've never. But the moment you you actually make it and then try it for yep. the first time. Like, you're just like, wow, I cannot go back to box pasta. 
Right. Well, it's um, like I've gotten. We don't. We go to steakhouses on like special occasions because I've been doing it for so long and I have such like a solid recipe knocked out. I this is going to sound very braggadocious, but I would put my steak up against pretty much any steakhouse in the country. I like it. So what consistency are we looking for here? So we're kind of looking for, it's going to be, so this isn't, it's not like, it's like, and, and here's the, here's the other thing too, that I want to point out. So you can see, see this, see this Nate now? Mm-hmm. Yep. See that's how, about right. When you, when you, exactly. When you keep, when you keep working the dough, right. You're going to eventually get something like this, right. It's not, it's, it, it, it it'll, it'll eventually look smooth. It really all depends on how you're, you know, you keep kneading it and like kneading. Right. I don't know if anybody, you know, just for like kneading, you literally just kind of fold it over. Yep. Knead with the it, palm. Fold it over. Exactly the same thing, right? Now, if you get if it gets a little sticky, what do you do? So if it's if it's too sticky, add some more flour. Yep. Okay. Add a little bit more flour. If it's not sticky enough, and you're like literally just flat, like it, and you feel like it's just flour. Add, add a little bit more water. Always do less, right? Like I think we talked right, about right. it on maybe either this episode, like the next, the last episode, or um, one of the previous ones. Less, less is more, and then always you can always you can always add, right? You, you can always add, but you can't take away. Exactly. That's one of my big things Very with tough. salt. When I make most recipes, like if I'm doing a chili um, and I'm using beans, I always look for the no salt, no salt added. Um, same thing with chicken stock, always low sodium. That way you can make sure you can control the flavor of it. If you need to add salt, right? you can add exactly. salt, but you can't take it back exactly. out. Exactly, exactly. Can you hear an echo on, on your end? No, right? Nope. Nope, you sound great, man. All well, right. I just have the food cam right next to it. So we got you got your pasta, right? So essentially, like, you obviously you want it pretty like kind of like tough and and here's the difference that i was going to point out just a second ago um this isn't a pizza dough right everyone right. like this is not it's completely different than a pizza dough this is pizza dough has got your yeast it's going to make it fluffy that's the whole point yep. they want that yes you could have fluffy pasta but traditionally this is kind of the consistency Dance. and this is what you're looking for right so like you take this ball and it's not going to, like, it's not going to rise. It's not really going to do much. Now, they say you should put it in the fridge for a little bit, for at least, like, 30 minutes or so. But for this purpose, we're just going to, oh, just cleaning out my strainer. Apologies. A new one. Pro tip, if you're married and you're making pasta, take your ring off before you start eating the dough. Ooh, yes. I actually didn't even have my ring on because I – Rarely wear it right now from working from home. Oh, totally. Right? That's crazy. All right. So we got our pasta. So what I'm going to do now is now we're going to come at you with two ways, right? Two ways that you can make this pasta. Well, at least for this episode, there's many other ways that you could do it, right? There's many yeah. apparatuses, apparatus, whatever you want to call them, right? I have the actual hand crank. All right, so I'm going to show you guys with the actual hand crank to actually roll it out, make the sheets, and then you'll see it come through the machine, and you'll see fresh spaghetti or fettuccine right before your eyes. Nate is going to take a different approach, which still just as still just as good. You're you're going to get the same exact result, but he's going to he's going to roll it out with a rolling pin, right? That is correct, sir. Ooh. What do you got for us, Royal? No scientific proof, but I made my dough in a vacuum sealer bag. What? That's cool. Okay. Uh, Dave, if you want to just uh, just take off of this one for a second, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna clean up this little area as we uh, continue. Something I didn't learn working in kitchens because we always had a cleanup crew, the dishwashers. But I've had to learn a hard lesson of <coughs> cooking at home is that always clean up as you go. Always. You're going to make it. I, up. Yep. I definitely have a knack for doing that. And like you just said, like, you know, like being in the kitchen, 
you know, like that. It, it definitely has its advantages. Um, where I, cl I, cl I have to clean as I cook, right? Like I know other people that like my wife, on the other hand, she is one, and apologies for the water, but again, this is, you know, this is a live show. Uh, my wife will use every single bowl and plate in the entire kitchen to make like one dish, right? And then- yep. Oh, I'm the, same, I'm the same way. The entire sink is filled, but yeah, she doesn't, she, like, it just, she just doesn't clean as she goes, which again, that's not, I mean, it's just not a common thing that most people do. Well, I'm still not great about it, so that helps. I mean, we could do a show entirely on, you know, cleaning and and cooking at the same time, too, if you want there, Nate. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm good. Right? So the pasta, like I said, typically they recommend that you put it in the, uh, in the fridge for a little bit um, just to kind of gather, like, uh, get everything together. Um, so we added, we did, unfortunately, I actually, unfortunately, forgot the... Uh, Oh, just sorry, scrolling through the chats. Oh, there we go. Okay, apologies on that. All right, let me just clean up this counter really quick. So, Nate, if you want to start, um, do you want to start rolling out? Yeah, man, you've got the you've got the fancy schmancy. I do, which which could cut down a little bit of my time, which is pretty cool. I don't actually have a scraper. I thought I had a scraper over here I could use to clean this, but. We are gonna, we are just gonna right like i really wish i had like you know like like emerald like we were talking last week with Bo. like i wish i had like somebody here you know with like prep kitchens ready for me and stuff right man that would be oh. nice we'll get there though buddy we will get there. right exactly i gotta have a team okay so let's talk about rolling out this dough do you flour the surface before you roll it Yes. So that is another big thing that I've learned throughout my years of making pasta. You need a lot of extra flour. And the thing is too, when you're actually doing all of this stuff, like you're rolling it out, right? You're, you're letting it sit for a little bit. You're really not going to taste that much of the dough actually when you are, you know what I mean? When you're actually working right. with it, um, it, it falls off. Right. But essentially you really, you need it. You like, yeah. You need the flour, especially for this rolling pin thing that I'm going to be using. It, if you don't have it, it's going to get stuck. I mean, because then the dough dries out. So that's that's essentially. You obviously don't want to put a pound of, of flour, right? Like that's not right. I just when you're but, doing stuff like this, I always keep like a little a uh, quarter to half a cup of flour just sitting around just in case. That, honestly, I think that's exactly how much I put on my side <laughs> for my side a uh, little bit. All right. Table's not as clean as I want it to be, but it's workable. Okay. Now, I'm wondering how I could set this up. Okay. I don't know if you want to get a, an action shot of this there, Dave. I don't know if what you can see on the on my camera. Okay, there we go. So this right here. This it's bad boy. Yep. I am hooking it to Is that a cat? Oh yeah. He makes an appearance in every single show that's upstairs. Oh, nice. It's an inevitability. Right. So, here's the pasta maker. Here's this lovely, lovely thing. There's our handle. What we're going to do. So, see, now Nate is obviously, well, I guess I could say obviously, but Nate is working a little bit harder because he has to roll it out. But the, it's the appreciation. Fine. I the. The appreciate right exactly. <laughs> what else I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna get my pan nice and warm for after. I got my water on. All right. Yeah, Nate just has to work a little bit harder, right? So 
I would say probably, I don't know. Take a ball. I should say something like that, right? Maybe even like a golf ball size, actually. That's a, I think that's a good, good reference. Put the handle in. So this right, reminds me of, we had a dough sheeter when I worked at Old Chicago. And this is how we roll out our thin crust pizzas, is through a sheeter like that. Got the first roll done. Does it look as good? No, but it's all good. It's all about the final product, right? You know, when people are cooking at home, something I think you should remember, the people who are doing things on these cooking shows are professionals. They've been doing it and they have equipment and apprentices to do a lot of the work for them. So when something looks perfect on TV and it doesn't look perfect in your house, it doesn't mean you did anything wrong. Right, exactly. Well said, Nate, well said. Well, cooking is such a personal and difficult thing to do. And everybody has their preferences. Every chef does things differently. Depends on region, training, and that goes to when you're watching a cooking show. Everybody's different. You learned differently than I did. Trying to switch this up so that you guys can see the pasta actually coming out of said machine, right? There we go. There it is. And what I'm doing is, if you'll notice, there are... Uh, certain uh, sizes, right? Like actual width and whatnot. So I'm kind of making it smaller and smaller as I as I continue to to roll this out, right? And I'm adding more flour so that it doesn't get stuck because it will get stuck in this machine. Oh, definitely get stuck. Look at that! Look at that! Everybody's probably like, "Oh my God, I want to go to your house for some dinner." <sighs> But I'm also I'm also not going to go too thin because I'm not a fan of like the thin thin kind of pasta, you know. So I'll put this through one more time. See, that's where you see the perfect example. This is where you and I differ. Um, <clears throat> I'm going as thin as I can possibly get with this. I don't. Do yeah, that. actually, you know what? I'll do I'll do the thin. I'll do the thin. This you time. know, do what you want. We're doing two different things. Two different preferences. Well, I haven't I haven't used this apparatus in a little bit, actually, right? It's um, gotcha. I've been trying the other ones that I was telling you pre-show. Yep. Oh, just a little difficulty of it falling out of the cabinet. That's fine. Okay. See, now when you use a sheeter like that, you're going to get a nice square. If you look at mine, I got this big round ish. See, I mean, one, yours, yours looks like a great pizza dough, right? Oh, it does look like pizza dough for sure, man. All right, now we're going to get a nice little live action of over here. What are we feeling for this one? Anybody's watching? What are we What are we feeling? Spaghetti or fettuccine? Any viewers? What do you think? Because I could do both at, at, a, at a drop of a hat right now. Well, I can only do one. Whatever comes out of my dough. So here's a sheet of pasta, right? <laughs> I'll give it another two seconds. I don't know how many people we have viewing. Uh, fettuccine, thanks, Royal. Awesome. Here we go. These machines are so worth it, too. Um, I have a spaghetti fettuccine attachment for this bad boy. I also have a ravioli. Oh, oh, what do we have here? That is pretty. All right, so... Look at that. If that's not food porn, I don't know what is. 
So now, just for storing purposes, what's up, Katie? So there is that homemade pasta. Look at that. And That's I don't crazy. Have my water, I don't have my my water boiled just yet. The great thing too about homemade pasta is it doesn't take like 15 minutes like your box pasta, right? Like right, it has, it hasn't been dried yeah. out, dehydrated. Exactly. Yeah. So it's so fresh. You, so here's a question. Let's say you yeah. want you get really like excited <clears throat> about making pasta. You make like five pounds of it. Is it feasible if you have a dehydrator to, to dehydrate the pasta to preserve it? Ooh, food? I don't know, actually. That is a great question. Any of our viewers that have an is, answer. Right? Dehydrated. Okay. I like or, that, though. I think that's... Could our producer, Dave, maybe look it up and pop in and let us know? Yeah. Yeah, see, you're already like... I'm still cutting mine. Dave, but then if so, if anybody notices, Dave, if you want to focus in on uh, on Nate's camera over here, he's using. I mean, it's it's traditional, right? The pizza cutter. The pizza cutter is always a good, always a goodie. And notice, like, and they're not going to be one the same, which is totally. You could let it dry on its own, yes, um, but you gotta. There's there's certain ways. I've never actually stored it, right? I've never actually packaged it. Um, maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have my own, you know, pasta that I could. My only concern with drying it, just letting it dry is that, I mean, this is something with moisture in it. It's got raw egg. In theory, you could run into some mold issues, some bacterial issues. You might get a dry pasta that's full of like E. coli or something like that. And, True, true. No, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely something that like if you're gonna do homemade pasta, right? You gotta you gotta make sure obviously you store it properly. I mean, with right that goes with anything, right? Right. Let's uh flatten some of these out. But you could see whoever's watching, you know, and your and yourself there, Nate. I mean, this, this pasta maker, honestly, it's the only downfall is, is you only can make two different types, at least from this particular, right. Where you can right. only do the fettuccine and, but this is also lasagna sheets too. If you're a big lasagna oh, yeah. person, you know what I mean? Like these are your lasagna sheets right here. The only, the, the tough thing about doing like lasagna or like Managut or, you know, your stuffed shells, let's say like, I never made, I've never made homemade uh, stuffed shells or anything like that, but um, with boiling it, right? When you boil like these, cause you got to cook this before you make the lasagna, right? Right, right. Exactly. Which is Royal, the worst exactly. part of lasagna. Right. And that's, and that's the thing that you got to be wary about. Like when you do the lasagna, sometimes for a lasagna, it's, it's just worth it just to get the box. Right. But I mean, you definitely see the results when you actually make right. it homemade, right? Oh, definitely. That goes with most things. There's a massive difference between store-bought in most things. I try, to, I try to make everything homemade at least once, right? I like to, yeah. I like to at least see how it's made, see how it's come. Um, I've made fresh mutts like, before. Yeah. Homemade mutts might have been one of my favorite things to make, and that... I don't even know what that is. Homemade mutz. Yep. Mozzarella. Oh. Yeah. Us, um, us, us Northerners, I guess we call them a uh, Joey, Joey baby. That's my so best my buddy first... from back home. <laughs> We've known each other our entire lives. That's awesome. My first job was actually in an Italian deli. <clears throat> the owner was oh, from awesome. Northern Italy. And oh. every morning he made no, he was he was an ass. Um, but every morning he made fresh mozzarella from scratch. Yeah. And See, if I if I had everything to do it, I would do it because it's just there's there's certain things that you got to do right that are mm -hmm. better. Like you need fatty milk, right? You need 
you need this, you need that. So it's just, it's right. like, you have to make sure that like the, there's like a rennet that you add to it. There's like a certain pill that helps like curdle the cheese. And you know, there's just, there's just little things. Oh, it was, was a whole process, there. but it was so good. Um, <clears throat> we'd open and these, all the old Italian ladies, old Italian women would come in to make sure that they got mozzarella. We opened at eight. It was gone by eight thirty. Oh, Every fettuccine day. with this one? I guess I gotta I gotta keep it consistent, right? Should I just go fettuccine again? Yeah, go fettuccine across the board. That's what we're making. Today. Yeah, true, true. Right, so they'll cook evenly. There we go. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's pretty. Right. This is definitely worth it, though. This this apparatus. I mean, you can get. You can definitely get, I have the KitchenAid attachment, um, like the automatic, which I still mm -hmm. have yet to master because I'm one that if I am using it, I need to master it. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 100%, especially in the kitchen. Right? But this one only gives you kind of like two, three different types, whereas that attachment, I can make rigatoni. It spits out bucatini. Um, you could do spaghetti, fettuccine, right? Bucatini, I mean, that's not really a too popular one, but like, a nice little tube, tube, tube uh, pasta, fettuccine all the mm -hmm. What's up, Joey? So my water's almost there, and that it, this this is literally going to take. What's up, Dave? Hey, I'm just popping in to say I did a little research for you on the dehydrator uh, question. Hey, okay. let's hear it. Awesome. Awesome, so awesome. not only can you dehydrate your homemade pasta, but it says that's the quickest and easiest method. Method, you can have it ready for storage in less than two hours. Wow! Oh, so, royal! You know, you're if you're doing a lot of pasta, in. There you you're go. doing it in a hurry. There you go. Thanks, Dave. That's awesome. I kind of assumed like it just makes sense, and these days. Like, if you have an air fryer, you have a dehydrator. Most of these, like, small countertop appliances that are getting popular everywhere, you're going to be able to find a dehydrator pretty easily. All right. I'm going to do, I think, one more. Um, Dave, let's actually uh, – so, like I said, this is a very simple recipe, right? I mean – you make pasta once, twice. You're gonna like you're 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 gonna remember. Hopefully, like I mean, at least at least I I, I do, right? Because I like making it. So it's definitely there. You go exactly. Three cups of flour, four egg yolks, pinch of salt, and a quarter cup of olive oil. I did not put the water because it's kind of it's it's up to you, right? I mean, it's you you could add half a cup of water and it may not it may not be enough. I'm so. Right. I guess I guess you could say there's a range, right? We'll say maybe half a cup to like two thirds. I think a little would would be a good. Um, yeah, I was at right about two thirds of a cup. I think is what I ended up putting in mine. Yeah, see, so it definitely it, it definitely changes. Okay, so nah, no salt? sauce, no sauce tonight, Joey. I'm actually I actually got a pan heating up right now. Um, that I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to put some extra virgin olive oil on and, uh, some fresh garlic and, uh, salt and pepper. That's it. And then I'm going to toss the pasta in that after it's done. Less is more. Say Royal, you get it. Like you understand the kitchen aid. That's a tough, it's a, it's a tough apparatus. Like it's cool. Right. Cause it like, it falls from the bottom and then you could use your little slicer you know where it just kind of falls out so it's like but it's it's definitely not an easy um apparatus to use and then i actually bought emerald lagasse actually came out with a uh, pasta maker slash juicer good combo i guess oh. right? <laughs> what i can do crushed red pepper joey not yet, not yet buddy Always room for crushed red pepper. Almost. Always room for crushed red pepper. Always room. Oh, if anybody's curious, that was my son, Jackson. He's been sitting somewhat quietly behind me and other places in the house. He's excited. He's excited to have some good pasta. He sure is. Even though he already had a grilled cheese, it's almost his bedtime. Ooh. 
I'll tell you what, though. Bo's tip on the last show about mayonnaise, we had tried it once. It didn't go well. Tried it again. It's the only way we make grilled cheese now. Dude, it's amazing, right? And and I will say, my brother, actually, he – um. He, he, I think, I don't know if he just made mac and cheese or something, but he was like, dude, the ground mustard. I've never seen that. I've never seen ground mustard in mac and cheese before. You know, I can't remember what exactly the recipe was and why I did it, but I've used mustard in things where it was like, there was one recipe that kind of got me into it. Like, oh, wait a minute. Mustard's really versatile. So I use it a lot. I use it in, um, I add it to my barbecue sauce. Ooh, okay. Um... I got, I've got a few things that I like to use it. <clears throat> One more fettuccine. Yeah, I may do the ravioli one day, actually. Ooh. Uh, that is a false is... Side. It's a power That's move. That's a false I've made before, actually. I mean, I didn't make the dough. I've done it once. I've done homemade deep fried uh ravioli before Ooh. Ooh, mustard and beef stroganoff okay okay bang hey okay i could get on board with that and then the last incredible sexy shot pretty of this pasta just falling out of this machine look at that that is a beaut. This is homemade pasta at its finest right here. Looks delicious, man. I'm really excited to eat this tonight. Right? Jen's probably like, oh, my God, I cannot wait for this to be done. <laughs> no, no. Well, she gets pasta out of it tonight, too. Well, it's that's what I'm just... saying, right? She's probably like, all right, nice. Oh, yeah. but, but, hey, this is your, like you said, this is your first time. Yeah, it you is. Know, this is. This is your first experience with making homemade pasta. Like, obviously, yours is a little bit more, we'll say a little bit more work needs to be involved, but all right, my water is boiling. I am going to shift. Yep, I've got boiling water as well. Do you salt your water, Spin? Do I salt my water? I salt my water for everything, actually. Interesting. Yeah, I think it, it, it definitely helps with flavor, right? But it sure, also, sure. I, I think it helps with, with the cooking process as well too, right? Or like boiling the water, like it kind of like helps boil it a little bit quicker. Um, yeah. So like I said, homemade pasta does not take long at all, right? When, so. you, put it in the, when you put it in the boiling water. So like this, this is probably going to be done in like two minutes, maybe. Two, two and a half, obviously still taste it. Um, al dente, that term is kind of used. Yeah, I guess it could taste like the ocean bang. Depends on what salt you're using, right? Don't drink, don't drink ocean water, man. <laughs> it's terrible for you. So there we go. Pop okay. it in the water. Let me get my... Cause al dente, right? I mean, it's gonna, it's just, it's, it tastes a little bit different, right? Apologies that my back is turned to everybody, but I just want to make sure that this is boiling. If this is cooking, all right. Awesome, so that is gonna boil. Uh, so are we going straight from the water to the pan? Uh, so I'm gonna strain it a little bit, right? Make sure there's still a little bit of water on it. I mean, you're not going to get all of it off unless you actually let it sit right. there for a little bit. Uh, right. But because you want that water, right? I mean, you need that water to help, you know, gather obviously all of like the, the flavors and all that good stuff. So uh, let me get my strainer. So as you can see from that, right? Like if you're noticing in that, in this, live shot right now of the pasta being cooked, you can see how it's starting to thicken up a little bit, right? Oh, 
So I'll let it go for maybe like another minute or so, and then pull one out and taste it, right? Because that's 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 basically like timing. Timing with pasta is I don't know. I kind of it 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 helps. It makes sense, but it also it's just. I mean, everyone is different, right? Every single thing is different with cooking pasta and ovens and stoves and. Oh yes, every appliance is different. Everything heats differently. So tasting, tasting your food is key. That is number one key, right? Um, yes, but two, you your to. pasta, you got to try it. You got to try your pasta, right? Otherwise you're not, you're pretty much just going to play a guessing game and then hope that, oh, okay, well this, see, so this is, now it's starting to boil over a little bit. So it's probably almost done actually. And let me... Can't really pull one out. Now do not do what I'm doing. Do not just throw your hands into the hot. I do have chef hands, which are, I can tolerate a little bit more pain and heat. <laughs> oh, that's a very real thing. It definitely is without a doubt. Um, it definitely exists. And when you lose those chef hands, because you've been out of the industry for a while, it's no right. fun, man. So a nice, nice little cooked noodle. I mean, we can't really see it too well. I'm going to give it a shot. A little this bit is longer. what I got. It's a little bit thicker, but. I could use a little bit of the pasta. So Joey's talking about the pasta water. A lot of people use the pasta water as like, you know, just add more flavor to it. Right. Um, it's not something well, I typically the, do. The starch will help thicken the sauce too. The starch that gets into yes. the water from the pasta. Yes. All right. So I got that still. Do you toss yours in the water there, Nate? Oh, yeah. It's been going for a minute. Oh, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Like I said, I'm holding some back for our dinner later. Right? I mean, it's it's basically dinner time, a little past dinner time. We're just going to eat later on these particular Mondays, which is what it is. Oh, for us, it all just depends on Jackson's schedule and when we get to eat. Right? Life is and busy. the other and- – and the other cool thing too, if anybody's wondering, you know, anybody's like, oh, well, what if I make all this? And like, what do I do? Like, so you don't have to make the pasta all, to get, all together, right? Like I still have, like I still have this dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap it up. Saran wrap, you can put it in Tupperware. I typically just wrap it up in like saran wrap though. Throw it right in the fridge. It's probably only going to last you maybe another t- max two days. I would say though, use it sooner than later. Right. Trying another piece of pasta. It's getting there. So while I'm about to take all of that out, I'm actually going to put a little bit of olive oil in this pan. And going to throw a little bit of fresh garlic. Yeah. I went, I cheated. I'm using garlic infused olive oil. Ooh. I'm totally okay with that, though. It's really good. It's very potent. You don't want to use much, so I'm mixing it with the olive. Are you done to fit? Not yet, buddy. We're almost done. We're getting there, Jackson. It's a family show, guys. It's a family show. It is. I love it that he's here, though. That he's. I, don't, I guess we can't say participating, but he's here. <laughs> well, when he gets a little bit older, he can participate. I right? look forward to it. That's something, I, something about being a parent that I've been looking forward to for a long time is getting to teach my kid how to cook. Because it's something I've been so when – I first, when I was like 12, 11 years old, 11, 12 years old, I was eating a can of um, chunky New England clam chowder soup. Ooh. And it wasn't good enough for me. So I like did all of this stuff to like kind of like spice it up. And lo and behold, I mean, it just kind of turned into a passion for me. I don't do it for a living anymore, which I'm very thankful for. It is a little crazy of a. It is. It's a crazy, it's a crazy industry. A lot of weird hours. It is. I mean, I'm still not ruling it out for myself at least. Oh, I, I, I would die. I'm in such bad shape. We shall see. All right. So I got some garlic going, right? See some of this nice garlic. 
A little extra virgin olive oil. Huh? Yep, that was Nate being an idiot. <laughs> so there you go. I probably put a little bit too much pasta in here, but that's fine. Yeah. So there you go. Here's the pasta. Look at that. That's pretty. Right? Let me add some of this salt. I like to use kosher salt and I keep a little jar like this. <laughs> Yep. Next to uh, next to my stove, and then I like I gotta get some more peppercorns, but I do like fresh cracked pepper, right? Like Ooh. I actually like to use I actually like to use the mortar and, and a pedal, right? Like mortar, like mortar and olden, pestle. exactly like the old olden times. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. Here. Oh, nice. I hear that. My go-to for saute pan has been a wok for years. Ooh, okay. It just, if you've ever worked in a kitchen, you're familiar, you really like to use your wrist to stir. You're cutting down utensils, people think you look cool. And I got this particular wok from Ikea like eight years ago. I think for $9.99. Still going. That's awesome. It's always those little things, right? Yep. All right. So it looks like I got some pasta all ready to go. Um, I forgot to pour myself, which I'm going to do right now. I mean, I am Italian. Gas and a walk. Yeah, I've saved my buddy. My buddy Peter, he gets it. He uh, he is of Asian descent, and his mother makes absolute – we got to get Peter up to up to the speed of his mother's recipes, but her I've had her fried rice. Um, she made this, like, beef thing, I I Anything she's made has been absolutely fantastic. Dude, I think this is prop. The wok's probably my most used pan in the kitchen. That wouldn't be shocking to me. Well, you also have a gas stove, correct? Yes. Yeah, see, there's us, uh, us peeps in, uh, in Texas, you know, it's, it's kind of far and few between where you can actually, um, oh, yeah, the fried rice. That fried rice was amazing. And she made also this, uh, this mango cucumber slaw that we put on a pork belly that I smoked. Ooh. Unbelievable. So I'm pouring myself a nice little glass of wine because wine and pasta just go together. I don't normally drink wine, but my cousin was here a few weeks ago and he is a wine guy and clearly you can't travel with it, right? So. Yeah. Uh, Jen's sister-in-law brings wine out here every time she comes from Napa. Oh, nice. Well, he also wasn't uh Checking a bag either. So oh. awesome. Mm. There we go. I'm just gonna take that off the heat. Move that. You can take that one off, Dave. You can just remove it entirely. Appreciate it, my friend. I'm gonna go deliver a bowl of pasta to my wife real quick. I'll be back. Please tell Jen to give any feedback. Guys. Do you see this? Fresh pasta. It's so good. The consistency now, is now if perfect. You're not doing a sh now, if you're not doing a show, right, and you actually just like, are you mainly focusing on the pasta, you can have this in a lot quicker time than what, you know, than, than what we did on the show right here. So clearly well, you yeah, can see that it's not, it's not, it's not that difficult to make this. Mm -mm. All right. Let's no, I'm stoked to know how to do it now. Let's dive right in. I'm just going to. Jen looks like she's getting down on it. Oh, man. See, and that's the thing, though, too. Thanks, Royal. Appreciate it. Appreciate you tuning in. I think there's two two times in a row. Hell yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. So Jen uh, reported back. <clears throat> she loves it. Loves it. Is ecstatic nice. to have dinner tonight. 
but see, and, and the thing is though that i also that you can also notice too and like and, and nate yours obviously because you have to roll it out right so you kind of have a little yeah. bit more difficulty as far as getting your thin you know like obviously you could still do it but with set apparatus i mean you know obviously you can control it a little bit better right Right. I went insanely, insanely thin, like you just did, right? Like where you, where you talked about that, where like, hey, should I go thin or? Mm -hmm. You could, de you can definitely taste the difference between a thin, like a very thin, right? Like, cause fettuccine, I mean, fettuccine. You, I just hear the word fettuccine, and it just makes me think of like thick. Yes. Like that, it, right? Like it's just it's. Yes, yeah, very much so. So the fact that it's thin though, too, fettuccine, it just it, it really like this is wow yeah it's very good the fresh garlic i mean the cracked pepper a little bit of salt not too much salt we have uh do you guys have a penzies do you guys have penzies in texas the spice place um we have spice places so there's this know. one particular we have in colorado called penzies i think they're a national company so for mine i use it's called mural of flavor it's got shallots, onion, garlic, lemon peel, citric acid, chives, and orange peel in the seasoning with a little bit of crushed red pepper, that garlic olive oil. In between media. I don't know who's running that, that account right now, but they order it through them. There you go. Oh, hey now. Seth? Is that well, Seth maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Whoever it is, come here. There's one like right? two state, miles from our house. State yourself. <laughs> Another Show IBC yourself. colleague. Uh, member yep i couldn't stop eating this this is unbelievable i can't wait to get to eat more of it i'm very excited just trying to toss this pasta around to keep it from sticking too bad but the thing exactly is just keep adding just keep adding more a little bit more flour and just keep working it right because yep. if you don't it's just and like you said it's just going to sit there and then it's just gonna it's gonna get it all sticky and then like the yeah yep. that is a good Good glass of red wine right there. Um, what, what are you drinking? Uh, it is Paso Robles. It is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Ooh, okay. Um, I am not, like I said, I am not a red wine drinker, but it felt right to have some wine with pasta. Well, yeah. Well, except you made a pretty light sauce, so you really, realistically, you probably could have gone with a uh, nice Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio. Right? But like I said, I didn't even buy these, right? Like I would never I – really, I rarely go out and buy wine for myself. The only time I go buy wine is if my wife wants me with white sauce <laughs> or, <laughs> or anything else that could be cooked with wine, right? Like I don't – it's – gotcha. I mean I have – right? You know what I mean? I'm more of a beer guy. Yeah. So. Oh, no, so I'm the same way. Pete, this bottle is going to sit here in the house for the next couple months probably and not be drank. Oh, just put it in the fridge, drink it tomorrow. Right? I say that, yeah. All right. So guys, I'm gonna I'm just gonna give you a little tidbit, something that I didn't do that I should have done. As you're cutting your pasta, if you're gonna be storing some of it, make sure you get flour on it almost immediately, or it will start to stick pretty quickly. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Flour. Flour is key, right? That is the number one thing. Um I mean, it's salvageable. I'm fixing it, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. But like you said, if it gets down that rabbit hole, it's going to be way too, it's going to be a little bit difficult to come back from, right? Mind yep. you, you can still, you can still boil it, still make it. It's still going to taste good because I've made some pretty bad pasta in my day. And the only way to improve <laughs> is to not, is to do things not good sometimes, right? <laughs> right. Well, you can, cooking is a learning process. There's a lot to with, it. There are a lot of different styles. Without a doubt. Yep. I mean, just in one restaurant I worked at, I probably had, I mean, I had to work under three different philosophies from different chefs from different parts of the world, from different parts of the country, different types of cuisine in their past. They had different ideas about what food should be. It's all subjective. It's all subjective. It's, it's, it really is an art. It's, it's, it's an art form, right? I mean, yes, it's a very much so it's some some chefs are artists some chefs just do it because they love cooking right like it's just there's m many different aspects and and i say it all the time too and i just i absolutely love ratatouille like it really is an incredible movie that actually like anyone can cook yep but only the fearless can be great right i think that's what he says i think that's what uh gusto says 
So, I think here's, so. here's the recipe. Um, one more time, put it up right here. Three cups of flour, four egg yolks at room temperature as well. Um, so let those sit out for a little bit. Pinch of salt uh, and then quarter cup of olive oil. You could do a quarter cup. You could do a little less. You could do a little more. The olive oil is not going to be your deciding factor as far as like the consistency of it. That's kind of where, where your water is going to come in, right? Um, yes, oil kind of helps it. It gives it a little bit like a little bit more flavor because you're going to get that like the olives in like within the pasta but it also could help like let's say you're doing it in a food processor it'll help like you could do the exact same process that nate and i did in in a food processor with like a dough hook it's like exactly yep. the same way you would do a pizza dough but just throw the, the pasta stuff in right it's not see and i should have but i wish i would have done that <laughs> save no it's all mess, good but, but now i'm glad i do it this way exactly yep. exactly you appreciate it more you see kind of like because now you can see people like if you're looking online or you're something like and you like you like you see them making the pie you'd be like hey like i know exactly what they're doing i know exactly how they did it like it's just and it's and it's so yep. simple too that's the great thing about like pasta that i think that everybody whoever's viewing watching like just this is very this is not difficult to make and i'm telling you Yes, it is a little bit of work, but the little bit of work that you put in will be so much more worth it than driving to the store and going to pick out a box. Don't get me wrong. I love me some barilla, you know, barilla. I mean, as like, it just, it, it's, it's completely different taste. It is yep. so much better than box pasta. You can't go back. You're not going to be able to come back from it. No, um, I couldn't tell you the last time I actually had box pasta that, that I didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> well thanks man thanks for having me on again it's been a blast i'm yes yes this is tonight he is nate povo i am fantasy Sven. be sure to subscribe to ibt hit that like button please 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 hopefully you like the show um give us the thumbs up every other monday you can catch nate next week i know he's got some other shows but he's got the 19th hole coming up next Monday in one week. And then we'll be back with Cooking with Sven in two more weeks. So every other week you get a new show. Um, be sure, please comment anything, any feedback, appreciate it. If there's anything that you would also like to see cooked on the show, feel free to reach out, right? To myself, to Nate, to anybody in in-between media, and then we'll try to make it happen, right? Obviously within the time constraints. Of course. Bon appetit. Cheers, buddy. Bon appetit.